So now we're going to see how the book approached solving for a two-tailed hypothesis testing the population mean when population standard deviation is known. And uh, they first provide you with this information here, like, hey, here's the p-value approach. Here's the critical value approach. You could pause the video and read through that if you want. You could also pause the video and read through this if you want. Um, you know, right? Some of this stuff is useful, like the critical values will occur in both the lower and upper tails of the standard normal curve. Uh, but mostly I just find it confusing. There's uh, what we went through. We went through that. We went through this. We went through that. We went through this. And, uh, and then the book says, hey, here is like uh, their calculation. And so when we look at the book's presentation, we'll put that on the left and we'll bring this on the right. And that way we could just kind of remind ourselves what we did here. So here's the hypothesis. Null hypothesis is that the population means equal to 295. And that's what we came up with. We said our null hypothesis is population means equal to 295. And the alternative hypothesis is it's not equal to 295. And level significance is 0.05. And the test statistic, they got 1.53. We got 1.532. So that's all good. And then the p-value approach, uh, they do this weird thing where it's two tails. They multiply it. Completely confuses me. So we're not going to look at that. You can pause the video and read through it. <laughs> and then they present a picture, which doesn't make sense to me much either. And, uh, and then they also do this and, uh, and their conclusions, we can't reject the null hypothesis, right? And we also came to the same conclusion, right? Like the null hypothesis should not be rejected, which is such a weird way of saying we're going to just say we're accepting this, right? It's a double negative, um, but they came to the same conclusion. And, uh, and then they also, uh, you know, have another little graph here and then they show you how to do it in Excel. So that's how the textbook approached it. Like I said, it's a little bit confusing to me. I like this approach much better.